Hello and welcome to a ghost site guide for EVE Online. In this guide, I'm going to be showing you everything that you need to know for running ghost sites. So I have been having an absolute ton of fun running ghost sites in EVE. Not many players actually seem to run ghost sites, but they drop heaps of isk and are so much fun to run. I remember the first time that I was in a ghost site, my heart was absolutely beating out of my chest. Because they are a timed site, you really have to run them at an absolutely frenetic pace. And the first time that you run one, you're probably going to mess something up and end up losing your ship. But hopefully, after watching this, your first experience in a ghost site will be a little bit better than mine was. So, when you're in a ghost site, you really have to make sure that everything you do in the site is perfect, and that you have a really good system for running the site, one that you can replicate each time you go back into a ghost site. Every second that you're in the site is vital, and literally a couple of seconds can be the difference between you making, say, 20 million in a ghost site, or you making 600 million in a ghost site. So you've just got to be burning between the cans absolutely as quickly as possibly and really flying through the hacks, definitely without failing any of them. Because if you fail a hack, you're most likely going to lose your ship and you're definitely going to lose all of the loot that was in that can, which in an improved or superior ghost site could be as much as 600 or even 700 million in a single can. So you just don't want to be failing any of them. Now when you are fitting to run ghost sites, you don't want to stray too far off the beaten path as to what you would normally do for an exploration rope, but there are a couple of things which you do need to be aware of, which I will go over for you right now. So let's bring up our fitting window here. I am going to be fitting up a Magnate, which I do feel is probably the best T1 frigate generally, and certainly the best for what we're wanting to do here. So the first thing I'm going to fit on our Magnate here is two small gravity capacitor upgrades. Uh, now these are going to increase our scan probe strength. The ghost sites are a cosmic signature, so we will need to scan them down. So this will help us out with that. Obviously to do that we're going to need a core probe launcher, so I'm going to fit the core probe launcher 1. Uh, if you have the skills, go ahead and fit the T2. However, I wouldn't recommend the sisters launcher because running ghost sites is quite risky. So at some point we are definitely going to lose this little magnate here. So not having a 30 or 35 to 40 million isk module on the Magnate uh, is going to mean we're not going to take quite as hefty a loss when that does come around. Now we are obviously going to fit a cloak on this, so I'm going to use the improved cloaking device. I definitely recommend that you do use this over the prototype. It has less of a velocity or maximum velocity hit, so you can do things like the cloak micro warp drive trick a lot easier and hopefully get out of bubbles and all that sort of thing uh, a lot better than you would with a prototype cloak. I will also put on a salvager. Now, you don't need to put this on for running ghost sites, but I like to have salvagers on my exploration ships just because I'm going to be heading out to Nullsec where I know I'm going to find lots of wrecks and when I find an elite or an advanced wreck, I'm going to go ahead and salvage that, and if I'm lucky, I might walk away with as much as 20 million from a single wreck, because they do drop the intact armor plates. Uh, and it also is quite fun to salvage wrecks in uh, you know, areas that are obviously quite dangerous, where ships have been destroyed before, and you've really got to be on your toes and on the lookout for someone who might come and try and do you a bit of harm. Now, we are also going to fit a 5MN cold gas enduring micro warp drive. Uh, so that's going to take our max speed up to 
2,700 meters per second with prop mod active. I will also fit a T2 data analyzer. You will need a data analyzer to run the ghost sites. So fit whichever one you're able to. Seeing as I'm able to fit the T2, I'm gonna fit that. I will also fit a relic analyzer. You don't need this to run ghost sites, but ghost sites are very rare. So when you go scanning looking for them, you're going to come across relic sites as well, which you are going to want to run. So I'm going to fit a relic analyzer there as well. And this is going to be a stab nate. I'm going to fill all of my low slots here with warp core stabilizers. So this is an absolutely paper thin frigate. And if anyone is able to tackle us and hold us down, we are going to be a meal for them very, very quickly. So having four warp core stabilizers means that it's going to be very tricky to stop this ship. And hopefully we will be able to avoid danger that way. Uh, let's also make sure that we put probes in our probe launcher and that we have probes in our cargo. So we have eight spare probes in the cargo here. The reason we want to do that is you can occasionally lose a set of probes. And if you lose a set of probes in, say, a wormhole, then you will not be able to get out of that wormhole if you do not have an exit scanned down. So you will be stuck there and be forced to self-destruct or wait for help to arrive, which could be quite some time. You can also see that I have a medium standard container in my cargo here. The uh, cargo size of a medium standard container is 325 cubic meters. But when we open this up, you can see inside is 390 cubic meters. So having one of these in our cargo just means that we've got a little bit of extra cargo space that we wouldn't have anyway. So if you can fit one of those in your cargo, go ahead and do that. Uh, let's go ahead and look at our next fit here. That's going to be for my Astero. So let's go ahead and bring that up. And again, we're going to fit a grab capacitor upgrade. Now, because we have less calibration here, we can only fit one. So I'm going to use the T2 version. And along with that, I'm going to fit some low friction nozzle joints, which will bring down our align time, which is already very good in, this, in an Astero, but with this rig, it's going to be even better. Obviously, we will need a probe launcher and probes. And I do have spare probes in this Astero here, so do make sure you do that. The Astero is obviously a Covert Ops ship, so we will use a Covert Ops cloaking device. Again, the 5MN cold gas enduring micro warp drive, the data analyzer, the relic analyzer, and on the Astero we have an extra mid slot, so let's go ahead and chuck a bit of extra tank on here. The Astero does tank fairly well for a frigate, uh, but putting this on is going to help us out a little bit more in that department. Now I'm not going to do the four stab thing on the Astero here, I'm just going to do two warp core stabs. Uh, on this one, and then go ahead and throw on my nanofiber internal structure, which I seem to have misplaced here. Maybe it's in my cargo here. Plenty there. So let's go ahead and put two of those on here, and that is going to decrease our line time even further and bring up our maximum velocity so we can really move between each can absolutely as quickly as possible. So those are the two fits that I have for running ghost sites here. So let's get on now to actually running the sites themselves. Warp drive active. So there are several schools of thought when it actually comes to running ghost sites. Some pilots prefer to fly a tanked ship so that if something goes wrong and they take damage in a site, they can survive that explosion or weapons fire. Whilst this is certainly a legitimate and effective way of running a ghost site, it's not what I'm going to be showing you here today and there are several reasons for that. Firstly, tanked ships tend to be larger and slower, meaning you're going to be wasting time in sight and therefore getting less loot. 
It is true that there are ways of fitting around this problem, such as an oversized micro warp drive, but these options generally aren't available to newer players. And with the method that I'm going to be showing you, you can run these sites with as little as a few hours of training. That T1 frigate fit that I showed you before, you can train into that in less than a day if you fit some T1 modules where I've fitted T2s. This means that as a new player, you can run sites right from day one that will net you between 15 to 50 million per site. And for a new player, that is some serious isk. Some players also like to cargo scan at a ghost site. I have tried this method in the past, but for me it just wastes too much time as you have to offline your warp core stabs to remove their locking range penalty. Either that or don't fit stabs, which means you're basically limited to doing one can, unless you want to risk the rats showing up and destroying you along with all of your hard work. So I prefer to rely on speed and leaving the site as soon as the rats show up. Sometimes this can happen in the middle of a hack, in which case try to finish the hack and then get out of there. Do not cancel the hack or warp away without finishing it, as this will cause the can to explode, taking your ship along with it. Whilst I've certainly been caught short before attempting to finish a hack, in most cases with practice you will be able to get them completed safely. With all that being said, let me attempt to demonstrate a successful completion of a Nullsec ghost site. Alright, so I have finally managed to find a ghost site. Here it is, the improved Sancha Covert Research Facility. So this is what you want to keep an eye out for. Like many other exploration sites, you will need to scan the cosmic signature in order to access a ghost site. It's not a particularly difficult scan, even a day one tune with the right fit should be able to scan it down. So I am going to warp to this now and show you how I run these. And just on a side note, shout out to Lyra Matusa, Matessa for uh, letting me out of a bubble that she had me trapped in and had me warp scrambled and everything, then uh, apparently they like signal cartel and free thera mapping, so they let me go. So that was pretty nice of them. Pretty happy with that. Um, and that means I was able to get here and hopefully run this site successfully. Now, the way I like to do this is I'm going to head towards the mainframe. So I'm approaching the mainframe now. Um, I have set up a bunch of hotkeys for my movement. Now there are default hotkeys set up. I've tweaked with them a little bit. You can just go into, you hit escape and you go into shortcuts or something and they're all here in navigation. So go in there, set up some hotkeys so that you can move around real quick and you want to set hotkeys up for movement as well as for uh, using your micro warp and all that sort of thing so that you can move as quickly as you can between the cans. Alrighty, I'm going to decloak now and I'm going to try and hack this and I'm going to try and do everything as quickly as possible and hopefully get out with a bunch of loot so you can see what kind of things this site can actually drop. Here we go. I've also got stopping ship as a hotkey, so I just stopped ship. Try and get through this as quickly as possible. There we go. Beautiful. That's mainframe done. Open cargo. Not much in there. Burning to next can. Oh, got to have this on. Camera tracking. Yes, please. Stopping ship. Locking can. Oop, 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 oop. Locking can. And here we go. Get through this as quickly as possible.
There we go. Still no rats on the D scan. And moving to this cam. Stopping ship. Still haven't shown up, obviously. There we go. Still no good blueprints, unfortunately. Moving to the last can now. Micro warp is on, locking can, stopping ship. And let's go, let's hack. Rats could be here any second. They are. Can is hacked. Is open. And let's go. And let's see if they will try and warp scramble. They did not. Check the combat logs. Okay, so we managed to get maybe 50 million out of that site, so not a hell of a lot. 88 covert research tools, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good amount of research tools. And we got these two blueprints, which are worth about, probably about 10 million all up together for me, um, once I produce them. They do require quite a few skills to actually produce these are uh, blueprints. Let's go to a moon and be safe. Yeah. But yeah, that is running a ghost site. I hope this guide was helpful for you and I wish you luck in your hunt for that ever elusive ghost site. If you have questions about ghost sites, you can leave a comment here or the next time you're in space, maybe you can contact Captain Ace Rico. Until then, I wish you luck in your intergalactic adventures. Keep your eyes on the skies, and as always, fly dangerous.